It's another beautiful, warm, mild October day. It may be one of our last, so make sure you take full benefit of it. We're going to start by coming into our seat and finding that seated mountain pose. Remember you scoot forward in your chair. You're at the front edge of your chair seat and your feet are totally on the floor, not just the toes, but the heels as well. And then practice your tall spine. Ah, oh, and maybe get a little roll back those shoulders to feel the shoulder blades move a little bit on the back ribs. Once you have that position, we're going to check that our feet are parallel and about hip distance apart with toes straight ahead. Then check that your knee is over the ankle. That sets up the femur bone right into the hip socket, which is a perfect alignment for our legs while sitting. Then press down into feet, feel that floor, and press down into the sit bones right in the middle so you're not forward or back too much. Now restore that tallness in your spine. Lift through the crown of your head again. And then roll the right shoulder back all by itself so you feel a bigger movement of the shoulder blade moving toward the spine. And then the left shoulder up towards the ear, moving the elbow back and feeling that shoulder blade slide into uh, the spot toward the spine. We have Sh Sue Shanahan coming in now. Okay. Sue, you just need your, uh, you do yeah. have one. Yay. Terrific. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> you are in. And we started class a little bit. That's so okay. No worries, just join us. I just had a furniture delivery. <laughs> That's why I'm late. <laughs> so uh, uh, mute yourself, Sue, and um, we can continue on. So let's restore that tall spine again and let each shoulder roll back just another bit. That's it. Lift through the crown of your head to feel that tallness and feel the openness of your chest. And maybe those collarbones from that sternal notch stretching to the shoulders to keep them back. Then look straight ahead, not down at your uh, laptop, but at eye level, look straight ahead and then close your eyes. Begin with a deep inhale and exhale. Then go to your normal breathing pattern. And bring your total awareness, concentration to that breathing. You can watch the inhale and then the exhale. If your shoulders feel tense, let them drop down. Shoulder blades will then go towards your back waist. Your chest will remain open. Your breath will slow down a bit. Stillness will begin to creep in. As well as contentment and happiness. We're going to transition now. So slowly and gently let the eyelids part. 
still look at that eye level right in front of you and let your eyes focus and adjust to the light in the room. I need to ask before we go further on, do you see a big picture of Noreen or do you see a small picture? Big, big picture, great, all right. Let's begin with our neck exercises. I was reading this morning all about the neck and that's not as simple as we think it is and all the complex connections that are in the neck. So these uh, neck exercises are very important and we're going to do one a little differently today. Okay, so let's begin with lowering the chin down to the chest. This is our ba basic stretch at the cervical, back cervical spine. Now remember, you can go as low as you want to touch the chest or not. That word not is important because you need to go where your body honestly tells you and then stop. Gently draw the chin away from your chest forward and then start to lift it up slowly so you can feel the rise of the chin and then the gaze of the eyes upward. You'll feel tightness on the front of your skin, on the front of the neck. That's the fascia and the muscle uh, that is stretching. Oh, there's so many other things I read about. And then lower the chin back down again. Go slowly, maybe deeper, maybe not, but feeling that stretch at the back of your neck. Now remember, I often say it spreads into the trapezius, but there's some muscles under that trapezius that it also affects. Draw the chin slowly forward and then lift it up again. Gaze upward, let the chin rise. Feel the tightness of the skin over the front of your neck as it massages that thyroid gland. And then lower your chin just halfway down to look straight ahead. Now we're going to do our, uh, oh, let's do the um, dropping of the ear first. Lower the right ear down to the right shoulder. Please experience some stretch on the left side of your neck. If you need to drop your right ear down lower, go right ahead. Sometimes including the right arm often gives an extra level of stretch to the left side. So maybe move your left hand off your left thigh and press it down towards the floor. For my body, this is effective. There's always the chance that going out to the left side from shoulder level is better for you. You decide. And wherever your hand was, bring that left hand back to your thigh and bring your head back to center. Allow the left ear to fall to the left shoulder. Experience some stretch on this right side of the neck. And remember, you have the option of going less towards the ear or more. Then use the option of the arm. You can press it down towards the floor or the right arm can come up at shoulder level and reach to the right side. See what's most effective for you. Then release and bring that right hand back to your thigh if you used it. Good. Now, here's the one I was stumbling all over with before. Uh, we're going to turn our head to the right and then to the left, but we'll take it one piece at a time. So the new part of this is to take your right arm um, and bring it to your left arm. So maybe above the elbow, so you don't put too much um, stress on that elbow. 
So here's my right arm going behind me and I'm trying to hold my left arm uh, up by the bicep muscle. Now keep, let the shoulders roll back and then turn your head to the right. So there's the twisting we often experience, that slight squeeze of the neck muscles. By holding our arm behind us, we're affecting the upper back towards the neck. Now, here's another new little piece. Lower the chin down towards your right shoulder. I can't go very far, but I do feel the effect on the right side of my neck and getting into that back left corner of the neck. Then gently release, bring the chin up, softly bring the chin back to center and release your right arm. So let's try the left arm now. Bring it behind you to your right arm and try to hold above the right elbow. So it's on the bicep muscle. Now, of course, if that is not available to you, hold on your forearm. Now, this helps to bring the shoulders back and down, shoulder blades down. Now, turn your head slowly and gently to experience the twist to the left side of your neck. So we're affecting the shoulders, the upper back muscles, as well as getting a twist in those neck muscles. Now lower the chin down towards your left shoulder. This provides a stretch in the back right corner of your neck. I also feel it in the middle of my back neck. Then lift your chin, bring your chin softly back to center and release that left arm. Wow, that's hard work. <laughs> but it's another dimension of how we can stretch the neck. Alrighty, now let's take our chin and just lower it down to the chest. Take both hands, stacking or interlacing fingers and bring your hands to that occipital ridge. I like to experience the length of my back neck on this one. I try to imagine that the vertebrae are stretching apart in my neck. And remember, creating that space between the vertebrae is so important for the filtering of the nervous system. Then release your hands and slowly and gently bring that chin back up. Super. Okay. We're going to go a little rogue today and we're going to come to hands and fingers, wrists, rotations. So extend your arms right out, stretch the fingers apart as you can, and then make that fist, curl those fingers into the palm of your hand, and then stretch them out again as wide as you can, and then curl those fingers into the palm of your hand. Stretch those fingers out. Patricia is coming in. Stretch those fingers out and curl them back in again. Now rotate the wrists. Any direction you choose and then try the other direction at, as well. Then knock on the door. So the wrists go up and down. It says P Patricia is joining but that joining word has not left. There she is. Okay. 
All right, then shake those hands out. Good. Now for the fingers, bend your elbows and have your palms facing the camera and stretch the fingers apart. Can you circle those thumbs around? The answer is yes. <laughs> All right, how about the index fingers? Can you circle them around? How about the middle finger? The ring finger? The pinky finger. Then can the thumb and index finger touch? How about the middle finger and thumb? The ring finger and thumb? The pinky finger and thumb? And stretch them wide apart. Then go in reverse order. The pinky finger and thumb. The ring finger and thumb. The middle finger and thumb. And the index finger and thumb. Stretch fingers wide apart. Do that grip one more time and shake those fingers out. Welcome, Patricia. Oh, you don't have your audio on yet. <laughs> I'll have to save that welcome for a little later. Okay. So now we're coming to our feet. So what I would like you to do is take your hands under your right thigh and just lift the knee slightly and point and flex, point and flex, point and flex, point and flex. Then do that rotation of the ankle, circling your foot around. Try the other direction as well. I think we have Patricia here. There she is, hi Patricia. And then lower that foot down. Hands under the left thigh, bring that knee up slightly and just point and flex, point and flex, point and flex, and then rotate that ankle around. Both directions, please. So I did the, the wrists and the feet and the ankles together today because I wanted you to see that these places, the hands and the feet, often are very similar to one another. So that's why I put those two together in my planning. Next, we're coming, oh, please find your belt. We're coming to the shoulders. So once you have your belt in your hand, mine is very long, I folded mine in half. You may not have to do that, but hold your belt in both hands. Have your arms about shoulder distance apart and grip onto your belt like you're pulling it apart and you feel all the contraction of muscle in your hands and forearms and a little bit in the upper arm. Then lift up overhead where you can go and lower back down. Lift up again. Maybe opening a little more of the armpit chest and then lowering down. Let's try it one more time. Overhead. Opening a little bit more and then lowering down. Change the position of your hand wider. So you're no longer at, your hands are no longer positioned at shoulder distance apart, but wider. Now lift up. Wider arms often offer a lot more ease, lower down, uh, when you have to have your arms overhead. So at any time that I say parallel arms, lower down again, you can always go wider. It offers more ease. And then lower down again. All right, we're going up again. Um, please watch. Let me adjust this a little bit so you can see my arms. So we're uh, keeping our arms wide, position the 
hands. I even move mine a little more towards the end of my belt and I'll be lifting up and then pulling with my right hand. So the left arm is starting to make my body lean to the right. And I'm starting to feel the oblique muscle on the left side. Of course, those inter intercostal muscles are also moving. And then lift back up and then use your left hand to pull the belt over to the left side. Right arm is extended and you're feeling stretch on the obliques of the right side of your body. Intercostals also stretching here. And then lift up again, lower your belt down, just halfway, shoulder level is good, and then twist to the right side, keeping your belt taut and finding an easy twist of the upper torso. Bring your belt back to center and then twist over to that left side, shoulder level, only a soft, twist of the torso from the right to the left, and then come back to center. Put your belt away. And now we're going to come to straight arms at shoulder level and transform that into namaste arms. So first sit tall, restore that tallness and extend your arms out to the side. Try to reach through your fingertips. Sometimes that helps to create contraction in the lengthening of your arm muscles. Turn the palms up. Now we're rotating those long arm muscles. Keep the palms open to the ceiling as you raise your arms up towards the ceiling. Now remember I said you could use those wide arms, those V-shaped arms, or you can come closer to classical with your arms parallel, palms facing each other. Then slowly lower those arms down to shoulder level. We're going to do it again. Lift those arms slowly up towards the ceiling. Stay at wide arms or continue to parallel arms. Now check your shoulders. Are the shoulders down? Are the shoulder blades sliding down your back ribs? The answer is yes, I can see it in your faces. Lower those arms down, flip the palms, and lower those arms all the way down. Shake it out a little bit. All right. Moving right along, we're coming to our spinal stretches. So sit tall, restore that tall spine. And first, we're going to bring the arms back behind us, perhaps at the armrest. Uh, well, armrests aren't too far back, but maybe the back of the chair seat, the cushion, or the railing for the backrest, whatever you can choose to just move the shoulders back. Roll the right shoulder back to give it a little more space of moving back. Do the same for the left shoulder. Now squeeze the shoulders together and the front body opens up. Keep squeezing the shoulder blades together as you gaze upward. Feel the chest open up. Pretend someone has taken their fist and is punching right between those shoulder blades. Oh, the arching of the spine. So good for that back body. Now lower the chin down softly, not too far, just a level, a parallel and take your hands to the front of your thighs. Slide your hands to your kneecaps. Now perhaps your arms are longer and you can go further down. My arms stop right about here. <laughs> so no worries. Drop the chin to your chest. Maybe the as you start to create that roundness in your upper back, maybe the hands slide down like mine do. Pull the tummy muscles in to support that lower back. Keep drawing that chin to your chest and feel the broadness of the back body. Draw the chin softly forward and up. Slide the hands up to the kneecaps, to the top of the thigh. Beautiful work. 
Now, take your right hand to the chair seat or armrest as the left arm lifts up. Start to press down into feet and sit bones as you lean to the right side. Now we already had a stretch for the obliques. Now we're going a little deeper into the obliques. Then bring that arm back, lower that hand down to the chair seat and lift the right arm up. Start to lean over to that left side. Now is your left foot, right foot pressing down, the right sit bone pressing down? I'm sure it is, you look terrific. And then bring that arm right back up and lower that arm down. So now comes the twisting. So right hand to the chair seat again or armrest, left arm across the body to the outer right knee. Please stay here if this twist is just right for you. But if you choose, you can go a little further. Take an inhale and on the exhale, start to move from the bottom tummy. It's not a big move at all. Then take another inhale, exhale and move from the bottom front ribs. Notice I'm not talking about the head. So it's only the upper torso that's moving. Now go to the left shoulder, take an inhale. Exhale, move the left shoulder to the right. And there's the twisting of that left side of the spine. Gently release, unwind slowly. That can be pretty tedious. All right, left hand to the armrest or chair seat while the right arm comes across to the outer left knee. Choose to stay here or to get more classic in your twist, take an inhale, exhale, and move from the belly, the low belly. Take another inhale, exhale, and move from the front bottom ribs. Inhale, exhale, and move from the right shoulder. Now the twist is on the right side of your spine. So good for your body, internal organs, lymph, all of it, circulation, then release, unwind and come back to center. Bravo. All right. So we're going to come to tummy muscles and take your hands to your chair seat. Find that tall spine again and lift the right knee up and then the left knee up. Lift the right knee up and the left knee up. Lift the right knee up and the left. Here's the last one. Now, if you choose, you can continue those single knee lifts or lean back in your chair, rolling the shoulders back and lift both knees up and tap. Both knees up and tap. Both knees up and tap. Choose what works best for you. I need, not that I'm doing a hundred more of these, but I could use them. <laughs> so relax wherever you are and we'll get deep into the belly again by sitting tall, extending our arms straight to the camera and taking an inhale and doing half of a forward bend, reaching towards your, your uh, laptop or your cell phone or your tablet or your iPad and then pull right back in. Take an inhale, exhale, start that process again. And then pull yourself back. Perfect, lower your arms down. Lean back again and come to that low bicycle. This also works the abdominals and the quadriceps, the hamstrings, the calf muscle, all those muscles, which are connected to those muscles that are around the hip. Oh yes, let's do it. Now try the other direction as well. Life is good when you can feel your quadriceps. Woohoo! And then lower those feet down. Excellent, excellent. All right. We're going to sit tall, lift the right knee, and just let the lower leg, you can hold on to the 
under the right thigh and just let that leg swing, that lower leg just swinging. That movement, movement in itself does a lot in the quadricep. Then bring the knee up a little bit and make a circle with the knee. So my hands are around the inner and outer edge of the kneecap and I'm circling around and then I reverse that circling, working all the muscles in the hips again. Who knew that circling your knee would do all this? And then lower that foot down. Hands under the thigh if it feels comfortable for you and just let that lower left leg swing forward and back. And then hands to the inner and outer knee and manually move that knee in a circle. Working all those hip muscles again. And don't forget to go in the opposite direction. All good. Terrific. All right, let's take our belt now. And we'll do our longer leg movements. Slide the right heel forward and position your belt on the bottom of your right foot. Flex into that right heel deeply. Feel the contraction of the calf muscle. Then pull with your belt. Observe the knee gripping and the front right thigh contracting. That contraction pushes against the femur bone to the hamstring. So you can assure yourself that you're getting a stretch in your hamstring. Your left leg uh, is bent at the knee with foot on the floor. Sit tall and lift that heel away from the floor up to hip level and lower down. But please continue the press into the heel and the pull on the belt. This is number three. And here comes number four. Perfect, lower that heel down and have the left side of your belt coming into your right hand. Left hand can help support you by holding on your armrest or your chair seat. Now sit tall, roll those shoulders back, Lift that right leg up again, maintaining the flex in the heel, the pull of the belt, and swing that leg out to the side. Remember, get the image of that ball and socket of the femur bone. This is a movement that you need for getting out of the car. You need to have this movement. If you're the driver. <laughs> And then bring that, oh, bring that leg back out one more time, lower down and lift up, lower and lift. Getting in and out of a chair, all these leg exercises we do are so important. Now lift up one more time, swing back in, lower, bend your right knee and lower the foot down. Slide your left heel forward, position the belt once again. Flex into the heel next. Feel the calf muscle. Then pull on the belt and observe the grip in your knee and contraction at the top left thigh. Sit tall and lift that heel away from the floor to hip level four times. Perfect. Lower that heel down and transfer the right side of your belt into your left hand. Support yourself by taking your right hand to the chair seat or armrest. Right leg is bent at the knee, supporting you by pressing into that right foot. Sitting tall, lift that leg again. Swing it out to the side. Now, if you're the passenger in the car, this is helpful to have this movement, this femur bone rolling in that socket without pain, without any uncomfortable feeling. 
Now swing out again and lower that heel down and lift up. Lower and lift, lower and lift, lower and lift. Then swing back in, bend that knee and lower that foot down. Bravo, terrific work. You can put that belt to the side and hmm, we're going to try lifting opposite limbs. Uh, the leg will be working a lot more than the arm. So um, if you want, um, you could have your belt around your foot, lifting it up and doing an opposite arm up. But that's up to you. It is an option. It is not. Okay. So sitting tall, I'm going to lift my right arm up and taking my left hand, I'm going to hold on to the chair seat, extend my left leg at the heel and lift that leg up. Now grip the knee, contract the thigh, press into the heel, unless you're, and even if you're using the belt and then lower it all down, slide that heel in. Bring your left arm up, take your right hand and hold on to the side of the chair seat or armrest. Now don't make this a lazy arm, extend up or wide. You decide how you can do this. Then slide the right heel forward, press into the heel, lift that heel up, hopefully to somewhere between the, the hip and the floor. <laughs> Press into the heel, grip the knee, contract the thigh, and then lower it all down. That's hard work, especially if you're holding your breath. So let's try it one more time. We're bringing the right arm up. It could be wide, remember. You decide what works best. Left hand holds onto the side of the chair seat. Left heel is sliding forward and lift it up. Press into the heel, grip the knee, contract the thigh. Look at you hold that leg up, bravo! And lower everything down, slide it back in. Bring your right hand to the armrest or chair seat as the left arm lifts up parallel or wide. Slide the right heel forward, press into that heel, start to lift up, press into the heel, grip the knee, contract the thigh, a lot of tension in that leg and then lower it down. Bravo, great work, everybody. Now we're going to come into a double leg Paschimottanasana. I know you don't know what that is, so I call it the sliding board. So let me go sideways. So remember you're sitting towards the front edge of your seat, chair seat, and your being safe, you're not at the very edge so you can fall off, and your feet are on the floor. You can walk your feet forward so they're more at a diagonal line. Your knees will still be bent. You decide if this is what you wanna do. If you choose, you can come to the heels. Now, this is a little tricky because you wanna stay on the chair. So I have my legs, um, parallel at a, that diagonal line and I'm sitting up tall and extending my arms. And then I take an inhale, exhale, and I lean forward and come back. Lean forward and come back. So remember, you can have both feet on the floor, knees bent, and do the same thing, leaning forward and coming back. Try to complete four slowly because I want you to stay safe. Leaning forward and pulling back. Pull the tummy muscles in when you lean forward and pull back. Lean forward and pull back. One more time, lean forward, hold it, and then pull back. Terrific, now bring your arms down and your legs in. And 
This is a nice picture I drew. Of course, I scribbled over it with all kinds of words. So this is truly interesting now. Okay. First, we're going to come to Gomukhasana legs. So remember them? They're the ones that come out to the corner of your chair seat. Maybe today you can go a little wider. Test it out and see. I can see your heads, but I cannot see the rest of your body. So I really can't see your legs, but that's okay. I trust that you are following uh, some of my um, subtle cues. <laughs> All right. So having the legs in this position stretches the inner thigh and see if you can press the inner knee to the outer knee. That adds on a little more tension to that inner thigh. You're also creating some tension in the buttocks, the hip muscles around the pelvis, and that outer thigh. So we're getting all this stretch by just doing this. Terrific, now maintain it and extend your arms out at shoulder level, flip the palms and bend your elbows. So now you have um, cactus arms and if you, you have upside down cactus arms with your legs. So you have two sets of cactus. <laughs> okay, now bring the elbows in and press back out. Now, can you press the inner elbow to the outer elbow, just like you're pressing the inner knee to the outer knee? You all have smiles on your faces, so that's a yes. Bring those elbows back together and try it one more time. Push the inner elbow to the outer elbow towards the back wall behind you, squeezing those shoulder blades, and now look Get the sensation in your legs, inner knee to outer knee. Mine are shaking a little bit. I'm pressing a little too much. And then release the arms and walk the legs in. Woo! Okay, time to stand up. So drink lots of water. And we're going to come to a sun salutation standing up today. Okay. Stand behind your chair, please, because that's where the sun salutation will take place. We're going to just practice Tadasana. All right. Let's... Behind your chair, have your hands touching, your fingers touching the chair backrest. Have your feet about hip distance apart. Lengthen the back of your neck by drawing the chin down a little bit, just a smidgen. Press into your feet, you know those four corners, and lift through the crown of your head. Now think about the legs again. You're gripping those knees, contracting the thighs, and you're pressing the front thigh. Tadasana. Perfect. This is how the standing sun salutation begins with Tadasana. I'm going to do the standing sun salutation facing the camera, but wherever you are, stay behind your chair. So let's begin. We'll go slowly first time around. Oh yes, there's a second time. <laughs> Find your feet about hip distance apart, toes straight ahead. 
lift through the crown of your head and I'll have an invisible chair in front of me. Then see if you can release your fingers and bring your hands to namaste. Then lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Now we practice this and remember you can be wide. Now I do have to move towards my chair. Bring your hands down to your chair and walk your feet back just a tiny bit. So you should have uh, from your feet up to your hips, straight legs, and your upper torso is leaning forward as you hold on to the chair. We're going to, this is like half of a forward bend and uh, or half of a downward facing dog. Walk your feet back even more and extend the buttocks back as your chest becomes parallel to the floor. Ears are maybe touching the biceps, but you don't dangle your head. Now, when you press into the buttocks, I'd like you to feel the hamstrings, the back of the thigh. If straight legs does not offer you comfort in this, bend your knees. It's fine to do. Stay in this down dog a little, a few more moments, and then lift yourself up slowly and bring the right foot forward towards your chair, towards the back of your chair. I'm going to ask you to bend into that right knee so the knee is over the ankle, and then push with your fingers on the chair to lift the chest tall. Release the left arm, coming into a warrior one. Then lower that arm down and lift the right arm, same side as the front leg. Then lower that arm down and bring your left leg in, Tadasana. Release your hands, if you can, from the backrest of the chair. Roll both shoulders back and bring your hands to the back um, above the buttocks at the lower waist, back waist, and lift the chest, rolling the shoulders back to do cobra, standing cobra pose. Then release your hands back to the chair. Extend your arms straight up to the ceiling and bring your hands to namaste. And that is the standing sun salutation. So we're going to try it again, except the change is bringing the left foot forward for warrior one instead of the right. Create your Tadasana behind your chair. Hold on with your fingers. Release your fingers and perhaps come to Namaste hands at the heart. Extend the arms up overhead. Urva Hastasana. And then lean forward. Put Walk back a little bit so you can see, check to see that your legs are straight and your torso is leaning forward. Continue walking back and lower the upper torso more, almost parallel to the floor. Press into the buttocks. As you press into the buttocks, you'll feel the hamstring stretching. Arms are long. Stretching long so you can extend to the buttocks. A good stretch for the spine.
then slowly lift yourself up and step forward with the left foot. You might have a slight bend in the knee. Lift, press into your backrest and lift the chest. Now, bend into that left knee like a warrior one leg, knee over ankle. You're pressing into the outer right heel of the back leg. Then lift the right arm. Lower the right arm down and lift the left arm. Then lower the left arm down and bring the right foot forward. Stand in Tadasana. Bring each hand to the back body, right at that, maybe that lower back waist. Roll the shoulders back and squeeze the shoulder blades toward the spine. Press the spine to the uh, front ribs. Cobra. Then release your hands, lifting your arms up to the ceiling, bringing namaste hands together and at your heart and then release your arms down. How did everybody do? Did everybody do okay? Terrific, all right, thank you. All right, we're coming to, we're at 11.03, so we need to rest. Oh, we didn't get to our wide forward bend. And you knew you wanted to do that, right? <laughs> All righty, next week we'll do it. All right, I'm adjusting my camera again. Okay, time to rest. Create your seated mountain pose with the tall spine. Look ahead at eye level and then close your eyes. Take another deep breath. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Start to let go of any tension that has built up in your shoulders, your legs. Today's reading is coming from Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. The author says, it wasn't until a few years ago that I realized how often I interrupted others and or finished their sentences. Shortly thereafter, I also realized how destructive this habit was, not only to the respect and love I received from others, but also for the tremendous amount of energy it takes to try to be in two heads at once. Think about that for a moment. When you hurry someone along, interrupt someone or finish his or her sentence, you have to keep track not only of your own thoughts, but of those of the person you're interrupting as well. This tendency, which is extremely common in busy people, encourages both parties to speed up their speech and their thinking. In turn, this makes people very nervous, irritable, and quite annoyed. And it can be very ex exhausting. It's also the cause of many arguments because if there's one thing almost everyone resents, it's someone who doesn't listen to what they are saying. And how can you really listen to what someone is saying? 
when you are speaking for that person? Well, once you begin noticing yourself interrupting others, you'll see that this tendency is nothing more than an innocent habit that bec has become visible to you. The good news is because it means that all you really have to do is begin catching yourself when you forget. Remind yourself to be patient and wait. Tell yourself to allow the other person to finish speaking before you take your turn. You'll notice right away how much the interactions with the people in your life will improve as a direct result of this simple act. This is an easy way to become a more relaxed and loving person. Bring your namaste hands together at your heart. Let the intelligence of your brain bow to the wisdom you find in your loving heart. And to close our class, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be safe. Lift your chin, open your eyes, smile, and namaste, my friends. Thank you so much for coming to class today. I really enjoyed having you here and it really brightens up my day. So don't forget to go outside today and enjoy the warmth, the mildness of the weather. And I, I'm hoping some sh sunshine will be there too. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'm going to end the meeting. Thank you for coming. Bye now.